All right, Ingrid Line, a single mom found just hours after she was reported missing. Well, her body parts were found, including her head and arm, a foot, found in three separate plastic bags inside a recycling bin. I'm back with my panel, Deanna, Ariva, and Johnson, and I, uh, Jason, rather, and I'm going to show them. Give me the, give, there we go. I want to show them what it takes, the amount of aggression and violence it takes for uh, take a pruning saw and saw through a femur. It's in, it's insane. Here you go, guys. Let's just take. I'm going to do. I mean, it. You have to. You have to work at this and work at it and work at it. It's not something you're doing in a few minutes in a bathtub. And by the way, this is just the bone. There's soft tissue as well. This have got to be cut through. I mean, you see how this is, right? I don't know, I need to cut the whole thing in half to give you a sense of how profound, how profoundly violent somebody and, in, and the deep intention they've got to have to really get through this. It's just, it's just mind-boggling. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, Rhoda, I'm going to give you this. Thank you. Now, joining us via Skype is a crime scene specialist, President Seek First Forensic Consulting, Randolph Beasley. Randolph, thank you as always for, for joining us. I, I just want to do a little demonstration there to give people a sense of just what kind of mind, what kind of, I don't want to call it a human because you're sort of behaving inhumanly, who dismembers a body? Why? Well, two things typically, Dr. Drew, number one, to make it harder to identify the victim, and number two is to make it easier to dispose of the body. And great minds think alike. I picked up the same saw that you just used, by the way. But, uh, yeah, harder to identify and make it easier to dispose, which is what they, uh, I, what they I, have in but, 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 Randolph, I, you know, listen, I understand psychopathy and I understand blacking out and I understand aggression associated with drug use and rages and violence and all this business. I understand what that is. And, by the way, everyone in my green room thinks this is the, the hot car villain again. Hot, hot, uh, hot, remember the guy with the picture that everyone fell in love with another yeah, fellow? Yeah, shot. people, yeah. people, the mug shot, the hot mug shot. Yeah. Now, this is your next hot mug shot. Listen, people, because somebody's attractive does not make them a good person. Now, then this guy, extra manipulative, extra charming, be aware is all I'm saying. But my question, Randolph, is, uh, is, I, I get the violence, I get the blackout, I get what psychopaths, sociopaths are capable of, but cutting off someone's head, you have to, that, that goes to another level for me, does it not? Is, is, there, is there any profiling of people that are able to do that? Well, yeah. I mean, I had a case where a uh, suspect cut the victim's head off with a box cutter, okay, oh. a box cutter. So, but, but basically, Dr. Drew, if you look at this diagram, it's the path of least resistance. So you're going to cut at the joint. You're not going to cut through the femur bone. So here you have the blue would be the torso. You cut off the arms, you cut off the head. So it, it would be something that could be done with a pruning type saw pretty easily, actually. So you're saying just you don't go through the bone, just stay with the soft tissue, don't do what I did. But, but even that, have you ever tried to take a chicken leg and, and just, dis, just dismember it from, I mean, it's gross that we do this as humans and some might even object to that, but you know, just a turkey leg, just taking it off the, the, the carcass it's it's a little bit of a deal you can't just pull it off yeah you go through the joints so you're cutting through muscle uh, tendons ligaments you're not cutting through bone that way uh, when you go through the joint so uh, what do you what say we're... what do you say Randolph about the claims of blackout any does that do anything for you at all well I've heard that one before I had a case where this uh, guy killed his wife with a samurai sword and he he claimed he blacked out as well woke up and oh my gosh someone's killed my wife with a samurai sword just sticking in her body, and he remembers nothing. Well, I think it's very convenient uh, defense to not admit that you've done something so heinous, uh, and, and that's what they, they fall back on. But I, I have seen, Diana, to, to, to fuel your thing, I, I've seen people black out in substance use and black out with trauma, and I really believe they're blacked out. I don't, does, to me, I don't care if they're blacked out or not, though. They still are somebody capable of this horrible behavior. Okay, can we bring up one other point? Alcohol, it affects your coordination, right? The amount of intention and coordination that it would take to saw through a bone. Think about how much you had to do just to get through the first layer of that bone. Somebody who's super drunk, Blackout drunk is not going to have that much stamina. Well, we only know we only know that because he said he was blackout drunk. We right. don't know if he was actually yeah. blackout. But his let's, history but is consistent with getting he's that. If he's a... blacked out, right? Let's just say he would have to kill her, then dismember her, then drive from Renton to Seattle, which is about 30 minutes, then dispose of the body, then uh, dispose of the car. I right. mean, come on, you don't. You, there's no way he does that all blacked out. 